everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I hope you're doing great and in this video we'll briefly recap the eclipse that took place earlier. So the uh, annular solar eclipse took place. Some areas saw that ring of fire. For some of us it was a partial eclipse and for others unfortunately the weather prevented a good view of it. So we're, uh, we're going to be taking a look at that very briefly but of course the main focus of this video will be on the tropics uh, specifically Invest 94 else so it is trying to get itself together it's battling some wind shear but eventually we could see a tropical depression eventually a tropical storm become of this system as we head into the early part of the new week so we're going to be looking at model data uh the latest as it relates to the track guidance could this still be a problem for the caribbean and also the intensity guidance how strong could it become well let's get straight into it and so first things first we are kick starting with the eclipse so i'm going to be showing you guys what i captured and it's looking, uh, you're seeing that reddish hue because I actually use just some regular window tint to act as a solar filter because, I mean, just pointing a camera at the sun, you won't be able to see a partial eclipse like that because the light of the sun is so intense. The exact reason you shouldn't look at the sun with the naked eye. It's good to have the proper eye protection, those eclipse glasses or uh, other alternative methods of viewing the eclipse. But this is what I captured at first. We can see the moon silhouettes coming in and then eventually there was the maximum eclipse just uh, before 1 p.m local time here in jamaica this was it and it was just a spectacular view uh and then eventually of course things slowly returned to normal fully at 2 35 p.m here in other areas uh, other persons in different areas saw more of the eclipse for some of us the weather was not in our favor so you can let me know in the comments what it was like for you did you not get a chance to view it was the weather not in your favor did you not have the proper view equipment and if that is the case you can make plans for the next eclipse which will actually be next april so that's to talk about in the future let's get on with the tropics and here we can see that there's all that activity out in the main development region all that cluster that little cluster right there is in associated with tropical depression sean we'll talk more about that as well as 94l there we can see all that disorganized activity associated with it but let's talk about the caribbean and surrounding areas so head into the vicinity of northern south America. America. We can see all these thunderstorms developing across sections of Colombia, headed to Venezuela, Northern Guyana, even over into some spots in Suriname and Brazil. We can see a lot of activity developing within these areas. Even over into Panama in Central America, we can see some disorganized activity there as well. Let's head further up north, and here we can definitely see that there isn't much across most of the region. A couple of thunderstorms popping up for some spots. Even near Anguilla earlier, you can let me know what's happening for you in uh, Anguilla and St. Martin. There's some thunderstorm activity even close to uh, Guadalupe as well but nothing too crazy as we've been heading through today over in Central America a couple of thunderstorms popping up for other areas Guatemala over into uh, parts of Mexico heading down to sections of El Salvador and even down into Nicaragua and some spots in Honduras and so now let's go ahead and talk more about these systems and so we're gonna kickstart things looking at the latest for Sean so here we have it from the NHC maximum sustained winds up to 35 miles per hour and the system is moving to the northwest at 9 miles per hour so it's likely to dissipate as we head maybe into monday night going into tuesday and whatever is left of it that's open trough that remains behind is likely to continue west could be very close to or just north of eastern islands of the caribbean but it is not likely to be anything significant out there at the time let's head on to disturbance 94 l so here we have it on satellites again we're seeing all this disorganized activity and it was looking a lot better why the change why is it not improving well the wind shear is in action let's head on to this map and it may be very confusing but there's the white outline of the coast of africa there are the Cabo verde islands and there you can see those colorful lines so the red lines indicate unfavorable wind shear those strong upper level winds which prevent the system from getting itself together getting those thunderstorms rolling and uh overall preventing consolidation so it's displacing all that activity and we're not seeing anything too significant we can see some of those red lines in the vicinity 
vicinity of the disturbance. So that is kind of messing with it right now. However, some more favorable shear should be out ahead of it, and eventually we should see it consolidate and become a tropical depression, eventually a named storm. The next name is Tammy. So this is likely to become Tammy and eventually a hurricane as forecast by most models now. So speaking of, let's head on to some model data. We're looking at the track guidance. And here we can see that most of these tracks are showing that west-northwestward motion of the system. And look at that little curve up. So uh, an eventual curve is expected of the system. It could still move very close to the Caribbean to the point where impacts are felt because these tracks are for the center of the system not the size. I will continue to emphasize that because, I mean, if we have something turning out very quickly, then most of the impacts will in fact stay offshore. But even if the system is just offshore off the Caribbean islands, that is to track the center. The center could be there. All that activity, once the system is symmetrical, it could spill over into parts of the Lesser Antilles and bring some dangerous impacts. And that is why islands in the east, especially the northeast, should be keeping watch. Let's go on to intensity guidance here and we can see that that green area represents tropical storm force winds, the yellow for cat 1 hurricane, orange for cat 2, red for cat 3, purple for cat 4, and even that lilac shade for cat 5. So at this point, no models expecting a cat 5 hurricane, but that one is showing a cat 4. Actually, a couple of them, three of them are expecting that we could see a cat 4 hurricane become of 94L. Most are expecting that it will eventually strengthen into a hurricane and we even see quite a bit showing major hurricanes. Well, major hurricane is cat three, four, or five. So whenever these lines cross up into that territory, then we're talking about a major hurricane being expected. As we look uh, on this line here, the X axis, that is representing the forecast hour. And if we head out to say 48 hours from now, there we have the lines. And we can see that most models are expecting that at that time, there could be a tropical storm be coming off the system. So it could be a named storm by then. And and I don't uh, think that is impossible because the system could rapidly get those thunderstorms together once it moves into a more conducive environment. And we know that the temperatures are off the charts. That will be fueling those thunderstorms and going on to this dry air map. When we see more of those areas of oranges and reds, that is indicative of more dry air. We're not seeing much of that in the vicinity of it. So it is going to have pretty much an easy time to try to intensify once that shear gets more conducive for it. So let's see how it's going to be progressing as we head into tomorrow but that is what is expected guys and again the system could pose a threat to the caribbean the longer it takes to make that curve and that will all be dependent on the timing of that front whenever it's, uh, it's going to be exit in the u.s so if it happens sooner rather than later and the system starts curving up sooner then it will be missing the caribbean but should that high remain dominant for a longer time and that uh front is a bit delayed then we'll see a system making a much closer approach. Some models still want to show that it will be a problem for the Eastern Islands. And so that is why I'm here to keep you posted so that you're up to date with all that is happening, all the changes, all that is expected. And that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this evening update. So I hope you found it to be quite informative. As usual, if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I can. And remember to always be with the wise.